Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Calibrate Tools and DIY channel. How's everybody doing today? Come on in, guys. Come on in. We have a very interesting discussion, and I'm sure you read the title, so you got your opinions on that. But I think it's a very crucial topic. It's a very, very critical topic, uh, especially in today's day and age, right? Um, come on in, guys. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And uh, come on in. We're going to have a chat today, guys. So this is the Calibrate Tools channel. And we are dedicated to educating you on how to become more knowledgeable and hands-on when it comes to working on, you know, what should be one of your biggest assets, um, you know, that is your home. But, you know, it could be a liability depending on the state of the housing market at the moment, right? <laughs> well, that's how it goes, guys. It's like stock market. You never know what you're going to what you're going to get, right? But I won't get rid of it right away if you have a if you have a home. Matter of fact, I'll look at more ways of adding value in case you need to get rid of it. You at least get a good ROI on it, right? But guys, do we always have to spend money on someone coming to fix our home? Or can we do a lot of these things ourselves? In a, another live I did before, I talked about some things you should not attempt on your own, but a lot of things you can. You, you can uh, attempt on your own. But this uh, live is not necessarily about that. It's about the broader, uh, it's about the broader um, atmosphere when it comes to trade skills and jobs and young people and and older people that are into trades and all that. What's going on, guys? There's a shortage, a big, a big, big shortage of trade skill jobs out there right now. Did you know that, guys? Did you know that? It's about 650,000 jobs, right? job openings in the trades that are not being filled, okay? There are some reasons for that. You know, we had the pandemic that affected that, right? Because uh, unlike a lot, of, a lot of other jobs or other types of work where you can work remotely, like a lot of people during the pandemic, they decided to work from home and they decided that they like that. They like working from home. They don't want to, they don't want to come back into the office and I don't blame them. Well, if you're a tradesman, you don't necessarily have that luxury. OK, come on in, guys. Come on in and uh, come in the chat. Say hi. You know, tell us your name and what you do and all that good stuff. I like to interact uh, with uh, that's what these lives are for. That's what I you know, that's why I like doing the lives, because before I wasn't doing lives. But I said, hey, man, I, I want to connect with my people, with my audience, with the Calvary Tools uh, family, with the Calvary Tools Network. OK, so come on in and let's talk about it. So during the pandemic, right, a lot of people. They can work from they could work from home, but the tradesmen, you know, if you're a carpenter, plumber, electrician, you can't necessarily work from home. Just by the very nature of what you do, you have to be on location. Well, the pandemic destroyed a lot of that. It severely disrupted the ability uh, for you to go on, you know, go to someone's home and work. I mean, it was just crazy. As a result of that, a, 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 you know, a lot of people left. They left. The, the trades they, they left uh they said well i'm not making any money here let me go find something else that's less labor intensive that's you know uh easier on my back or whatever so it left the big old hole in the trades it left the big gap and that gap is still there i think about eight million jobs were lost about eight million jobs were lost during the pandemic in, in the trades okay hey perry good life knows how you doing Good to see you. Good to see you. Always great to see you. Pair of good life notes. Eight million jobs were lost during the pandemic. Okay, in the trades. Now, I think about half of that was that job loss number has is, is was filled. In other words, you know, about four million jo four million jobs came back, but you still have about you still have a big a big gap, and there's there's a lot of reasons for that. Now, the pandemic is not the wasn't the only reason. That there was a shortage in the in, uh, of of trade skilled workers, but you know that was happening before the pandemic, the shortage. But uh, the pandemic definitely uh, it was like the uppercut right to to that shortage. It it, it really um, exacerbated the shortage, right? So that's what you have now. And you know if you have a shortage of something, let's let's basic economics. If you have a shortage of something, supply and demand, right? Uh, I don't care what it is. If you have a shortage of fruits or apples or cars or whatever, labor, if you have a shortage of labor, guess what? The prices are going to go up, right? Price is going to go up. The gas, food, and all that stuff's going to go up, right? So 
as a result of that shortage, the labor shortage, uh, the prices went up, right? I mean, there's we talked about, I think, in a few lives uh, uh, ago, uh, the reasons why gas and food went up. But yeah, the labor shortage. We did mention the labor shortage and the lack of trade skilled workers. The shortage of trade skilled workers definitely contributed to the, the rise in prices. Okay, guys? So what what do we do about it? What do we do about it? Right? I mean, let's let's go back before the pandemic, okay? Um, why why is there a shortage of uh, trade trade skill workers? Well, it's it's obvious that trade skills were never pushed in schools like they used to be. Okay, so you you're conditioning young people not to even look at a trade as a viable option to pursue, right? Because it's all these it's like a stereotype. It has a stigma to it, right? Working with your hands, all that stuff. But, you know, a lot of young people don't understand the, the income potential, the amount of money you can make uh, in a trade, right? If you get in there, start, start at the bottom, work your way up. And a lot of people don't understand, a lot of young people don't understand you can, you can make well over six figures uh, if you stick to it and, uh, and learn what you need to learn. Sorry about that, guys. So, guys, come on in. Come on in. Give us your opinion on what I'm talking about here. If you're, if you're experiencing this yourself, you're looking for a job in the trades, or you know, um, you see the you know you see the shortage uh, that's happening out there and how it's affecting your environment. Come on in and, and give us your give us your opinion on what I'm talking about here. Okay. Um, I work as a uh, a welding instructor. I'm a certified welding welding instructor, certified welder. I also work in the trucking industry as well, so I get a first hand look at uh, what's going on here. What, what what I'm talking about, okay? There are some roadblocks that can affect uh, some people from getting into a trade, right? So you go to the vocational school, you go to the trade school, you learn the skill. And by the way, some of these trade schools don't cost anything or next to nothing compared to a college degree. OK, and I'm not knocking college. There are some fields that you have to go get your formal education in. And I would trust, you know, somebody who actually went to a college to learn, say, how to be um, say a doctor or something like that. Right. If you're into Western medicine, that's that's another thing. Rather than somebody, you know, some shade tree doctor or something like that. Just to, So I get it. You know, there is a place for college. But you have to understand the educational system is also a business. Right. And their job is to extract as much uh, funds or money out of you or your your uh, parents to keep the keep to keep the school going, pay their salaries and all that good stuff. And you're paying all this money. And, and if you don't choose wisely and what you want, uh, as far as a career choice, you will end up um, eating that. Right. And that's not that's not good at all. There's a lot of kids out there that they they went to school and they're, they're not uneducated. They just don't have the opportunities they used to have, their parents used to have. And so they're uh, they're struggling out there, right? But if you pursue a trade, um, you don't necessarily have to struggle as much and you don't have to pay as much. And sometimes your income can exceed the income that you would get uh, on an entry level job straight out of a four year uh, college uh, with a four year degree. So yeah, it's not being pushed like it used to be, right? So students, uh, young people have this stigma about it, and they're not pursuing it. Matter of fact, I'll, let me see if I can look up some numbers here uh, when it comes to how young people receive the trades, okay? Where, uh, let's see here. Uh, I just saw that. Sometimes, you know, you can put your notes one place and then they they, uh, they seem to escape you. But uh, it's, uh, okay, I, I'm gonna go off the top of the head. I think it's like 40% 40, 40 uh, of young people don't believe a skilled trade career is a good option, okay? That's a lot, okay? And and, and there's something influencing them. It's the media, it's, 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 it's you know, it's go get, uh, go get a degree and all that good stuff. Um, some just okay. A small, I'd say about a third of that forty percent. They don't like manual labor. I get it. Everybody doesn't want to work with their hands. Okay. Um, what else? Um, some of them just they just 
fear of not having the skills to 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 excel in the trades. But let me tell you, um, I work as an instructor in, in, a, in a trade school myself, and um, a lot of these trades, it just takes – you don't have to be scared, man. You, you get coached, you know, and it's nothing to be scared of. And you leave in a, a, a short – sometimes it takes a month for somebody to get certified in a certain degree. Like, I'm a certified well, welding instructor, and uh, we have – where I am, they we, we, certify, we certify young people. We certify – older people in, in a month, a month's time, you know, uh, come on. And some of them go out there and they get jobs right away. And if, you know, so it's not, it's not the, uh, the aptitude. Okay. Because everybody that comes through our, 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 uh, program, we make sure that they get certified. Okay. We make sure that they have the tools necessary to approach a, <clears throat> a, a company. G Ford, how you doing, buddy? College degree is important when it comes to leadership and business. Huh, now you're going off on a tangent here, G Ford. Let's discuss that. When it comes to leadership and business. And maybe you have more experience than that because you can learn leadership skills from a, um, can you learn leadership skills from a book? You can read about it. Yes, you can. But um, you don't necessarily, I don't necessarily think you, 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 uh, that college is the only place that you can learn leadership skills, you know, but I do agree that it can be a great environment for that. Okay. I do. I do agree with that. Right. You can definitely learn leadership skills in, in, in any kind of environment, a trade school or whatever in the military. Um, and sometimes those skills, uh, are, I think they start at home to be honest with you. You know, you got to learn leadership skills at home. You got, they have to be taught. So yeah, I mean, back to back to the trade the, the trade schools. Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> G Ford said no, no. Please, G Ford, I, I, I'm I welcome your I welcome your opinion on this, and I, I I would love for you to elaborate why you feel college is the. I, you didn't say the only place, but you said it's very important. Elaborate on that. Now, I, I, I love to discuss that with you. Uh, okay. Very good life notes. A lot of vocational schools are closed due to accreditation. Very true. Very true. Matter of fact, you know, a lot of vocational schools, especially, uh, I work at a nonprofit, um, when it comes, you know, they, they, they need funding, right? They need funding and accreditation can, can, uh, limit the opportunities of some of these vocational schools to get the funding they need. So if they don't have accreditation, if they're not accredited, they won't, won't get the funding. And guess what? They're going to shut down. And I, in the past, in a couple the past couple of years, I think a couple I've heard of a few schools shutting down. A lot of them, a, a few of them had to do with fraud and, and all, you know, people uh, acting in in a, um, you know, I don't want to say criminal way, but taking people's money and not giving them what they need. So they shut down for those reasons. But definitely accreditation can be a stumbling block to a lot of vocational schools. Absolutely. I hear you on that. And, you know, sometimes, okay, I'm not saying all the time, a lot of these jobs, say if you're trying to get a union job, um, they require like a high school, a high school diploma, right? A high school or a high school equivalent, right? A equivalent of a diploma. And if you don't have that, then it may be hard for you to get in. For instance, um, I was talking to a colleague earlier today, and she was telling me about a student um, who was trying to get, I guess he had an opportunity to get a, a job in a trade as a welder, and uh, but he needed his transcripts or he needed his uh, yeah, diploma or something like that, and he didn't have it because he owed money to the school, so they wouldn't release it to him. And uh, that could be a stumbling block to people as well, financial limitations, right? These schools, man, I mean... Sh if it's especially a private school, I think it was a private school, right? So he had to pay. Yeah. And um, they wouldn't release his diploma to him and, and he's, he was stuck, but he said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to figure out a way to get this. So he actually went to the principal of the school and talked to the principal and got his diploma. Okay. So sometimes you got to be persistent and you got to be creative, right? If you don't have the money and that's, that's, uh, that's how it is in life period. Right. So, Yeah. So that could be a stumbling block, you know, having the right, uh, uh, like I said, a high school, high school equivalent of a diploma, 
uh, all the, the transcripts and stuff like that, you know, those things uh, can stop you in some cases from getting a job in the trades. Okay. Now, sometimes students, they have all of that and they go out there and they get the job or, or no, they don't, they don't get the job right away or, or the job is not paying what they thought it would, would pay. And they get another job that's paying better. Right. So they leave uh, the trade job and then they go work somewhere else and they get stuck in that cycle because they're making more money. They got families now and stuff like that. So you see, you, you know, you see that happening. But what we try to ex explain to our students, hey, you're not going to get paid the most right away. Right. You may start off at the lowest level and uh, then you can you can rise up and, you know, through the ranks and, and uh, earn, earn your keep. Right. But some people don't have patience for that, right? And um, that's some of the reasons why there's always been a shortage. And then you got the the baby boom, baby boomers leaving, right? They've been in a trade for all these years, and they said, I got to get out of here. And there's no one there to replace them. So you got this big shortage. Then you got, the, like I said, you got the pandemic. It came and just came came from the back and hit hit the hit the trades like like a Mack truck, right? And a lot of people were out of work, and uh, and all of that. And you have this big shortage. You have this big shortage. So those are some of the reasons, guys, that that um, there is this big shortage in trades, okay? So, all right, guys. So what, what, what are some of the things? What are some of the things, that guys, that we can do about this? Let's talk. Come on in the chat. Okay, if this topic is near and dear to you like it is to me, Come on in the chat and give us your opinions. Let's try to solve this together. Let's fix this together, guys. Okay? Because, like I said, it's going to affect everybody. Okay? The labor shortage is going to affect everybody, right? It's going to affect you at the pump. It's going to affect you at the grocery store. It's going to affect you everywhere. We need a skilled labor force, guys. Not just people with degrees, but people who can go erect structures, you know, build, build, and, and, and uh, we got to pay them adequate, adequately, right? I was talking to a, a friend of a friend, and she was telling me about a, uh, a, a client of hers that, uh, you know, he, he uh, had some issues with his former job, and he had, and he wasn't getting the, the retirement money that he was expecting. And um, so he had to figure out a way to supplement that, right? I mean, that's kind of messed up. He, Worked all those years, and they 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 uh, pretty much shafted him on on his retirement money, and uh, I think he's trying to fight it right now. So he went and bought. He's an industrious person. He went and and, and bought a business. It was an auto mechanic shop, and um, so he's 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 working on that. He's building that out. And one of the things he said was that it's so hard to find skill skill workers, right? So hard to find them. And I explained to you one of the, some of the reasons why that is. I mean, a lot of a lot of kids just aren't conditioned to look at the trades as a as a career choice, right? And um, so he's saying that it's so so hard to find skilled workers, skilled mechanics, uh, skilled auto, auto body technicians, uh, skilled auto technicians. And what's going to happen is, like I said, supply and demand, right? The ones that do show up and want to work in the trade. Uh, He's going to have to pay him more money, right? Because the supply is short. The supply is short. He's going to have to pay him more. And guess what? He's going to pass the cost of that on to the customer. So you go in there and you want a break job. G4. Um, <clears throat> Home Depot. <laughs> parking lot. <laughs> hey, I got you, G4. Home Depot parking lot. But there are some issues with that, right? Um, and, and we don't need to get into that. But, hey, if you don't have the right paperwork, Right. Um, hey, or if you hire someone with without the right paperwork, you could get you can get your, your place shut down. So I don't know about the Home Depot parking lot thing as, as a, a long term option. Right. Um, but, yeah, so he, he bought this this uh, this auto mechanic shop and he's going to have to pay him more. But he's not going to eat that. He's going to pass it on to you. He's going to pass the cost on to you. So that's how that's how it works, guys. Anytime there's anytime there's a, a shortage of something, everybody pays. Everybody pays the price, right? Even if you don't think you're paying the price. And uh, that's why we have to correct this. We have to do something about this, guys. We have to do something about this, okay? 
So hit that like and subscribe button. And, uh, you know, let's get this out. The algorithm uh, needs to get this out to more people because this is affecting you and me. It's not just something I'm talking about. Okay, it's just this. This is important. This is very important to me. I, I may talk about this topic forever, right? Because it's it, it hasn't gone anywhere. It hasn't gone anywhere. And another big thing is, guys, is is lack of, like young people are experiencing is that their lack of exposure to it, right? The lack of exposure to people in their families in the trades, <laughs> getting political edgy for it. Very good life notes starts in the educational system. Reintroducing the vocational skills to students. Absolutely. I was just about to touch on that. We got to introduce more programs, more technical programs, vocational programs in our educational systems. We took them out. We took them out. Not that they're totally gone, but we took them out. And now we're paying the price for that. We are paying the price for that. Even I mean, look at the I mean, United States pretty much outsourced its manufacturing in, in what was it, the 80s or whatever. And we we paid the price ever since. Now we're beholden to see. This is what happens. People don't understand that economics and politics are intimately tied together. Okay, and I'm going to add one more thing to that: culture, culture, economics, politics, and culture are int intimately tied. So you outsource your your, your manufacturing. Uh, we were required to take several vocational classes in the '70s. Yeah. I remember taking uh what did I take? I think I took typing uh wood shop, you know, all that stuff. And that was in the in the uh when was that? I think that was in the eighties, yeah. You don't see too much too much of that anymore, right? Now some people are gonna come in there and say, Yeah, in, in my school I have it. Well, you know, in certain schools in certain areas, certain certain parts, certain demographics, they don't have it, right? They don't have the funding. And all that stuff. So they don't have it. So they're they're churning out students without any skills at all. We're not even going to talk about the 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 the, the, ed, the books that they have are outdated and all that stuff in some of these communities. So then they're not even getting a up to date education. Okay. So yeah. So yeah, guys. I mean, uh, our kids are not getting like they're not getting exposed to it. I mean, how many of you guys have had a grandfather or, or cousin or uncle or that know how to work on cars or was in the trades themselves or was able to talk about the benefits of being in the trade, took care of their families? That you know, back in the day, have you ever read Who Moved My Cheese? No, I haven't, but I've heard about it. Did, is the author a guy named Malcolm Gladwell? G Fort. No, not not Malcolm Gladwell. It was either Malcolm Gladwell or the other guy with the glasses and the bald head. Malcolm Gladwell doesn't have a bald head, but the other guy, Seth Godin, is that is that his Seth Godin? It's either Malcolm Gladwell or Seth Godin. Now sometimes I confuse the two because they both sound alike. Is that a good book? Is that a good read? What's what's the basic? Uh, tenets of that book or the basic takeaways g for it that that made you want to mention that book because i know uh seth godin is a prolific he's a prolific author just like malcolm gladwell is yeah so we have we're turning out <clears throat> kids that that have no exposure either in their personal family lives or either in the schools they have no exposure to the trade so yeah I, I, I've heard about it in the past that it was a good one. Yeah, I might have to check it out and do, you know, do some reading on that. Come back to you next time on the on the next live. We could talk about it. Okay. Yeah, we're turning out we're turning out a a a, 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 a generation of, of of kids that are you know. Internet it's all about the internet, and I'm on the internet, right? But I'm not on the internet just to be on the internet. I'm on the internet for educational purposes. You know what I mean? So we're turning out these kids that, that don't have uh, any desire to pick up a trade, pick up a hammer, pick up a, a, a know what welding is all about. Know what, you know, uh, what, what a general contractor does, you know, people that can build things from the ground up. I mean, come on, we all, we all live in buildings. Somebody had to build them, right? G4 
D4, did you make the uh, choices that impact your future? Yes, absolutely. You do make every choice you make impacts your future. Every choice holds the seed of your future in it. At way A, any public subsidized construction project should be required to develop underrepresented black workers in the trades, not sign holders. You know what? Now, now, now you want to now you touch at way now you're touching on something here, buddy. Okay, we can get into this. I have not a problem. If you if tell me anybody, G Ford, Perry Girl Life Notes, at way at way already mentioned it. When you drive by a construction site. Okay, and I'm going to go there. A lot of the uh, African-American workers on that site are sign holders. <laughs> They're holding the signs. You don't necessarily, I don't really see them driving the heavy equipment. I hardly see them on a, on even a jackhammer, but they're sign, they're sign holders or security guards. At, <laughs> it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I hate to say it, but, but that's what you see out there. I mean, what, what's up with that? What, what do you think that's all about? Are they not as skilled as anybody else? Or, uh, what is it? Is it? I don't know, but I, I know it's. I know it's very disturbing to see. And uh, we do have to represent at way. I I one hundred percent agree with you. One hundred and twenty percent agree with you that that uh, there is. We do see preferential treatment in the trades. Okay, and uh, I worked. Uh, like I said, I, I'm in the trucking industry, and I. I go in and out of the ports, the port, the ports, right? The where the ships come and take the containers off. Well, you got to trucks got to go in there and pick up the containers. <clears throat> and when before the trucks leave out of the port, um, you have to go through what's called rotability, and it's where all the, it's where all the, um, AJ AJW, hey, salute to you, King. Okay, I appreciate what you do. Okay, I appreciate what you do. Matter of fact. Put that up there. And I, I want to, you know, I don't know what everybody does in the chat, but I appreciate what everybody does, man. And I appreciate everybody coming in here and showing love and 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 communi- you know, having a, a good conversation. And sometimes we touch on sensitive topics, you know, that but you know, don't 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 run and don't run and hide, man. Let, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it like grown people, you know. We can talk about it. It's real. Every everything in life is not not, you know, what's the word? Everything is roses or whatever. You know, we got some, we got some rough edges you know, that we got to sort out in this life, man. And, and if we can come in here like grown adults and talk about things, even sensitive topics, that's what I want. You know, I mean, we, I want us to be able to come in here and talk about it because, you know, I talk about the trades and all that stuff. And, and uh, but you have to understand a lot of the evils that exist in society, they, they exist in everywhere in the trades and all that, you know, racism, pre- preferential treatment, uh, all that's all that stuff, man. It's it's ridiculous. But anyway, um, G Ford says depends on the area. I guess it would depend on the area, G Ford. But I know I live on the West Coast, okay? So that's what I see. I don't, I don't. You know, I mean, if you're on the East Coast, where the demographics a little different, you might see, you might see uh, a different a different dynamic going on. But I, I could just tell you what I see on on, on my, in my area. AJW from Bonds and Inglewood. Hey, hey, I got you, bro. AJW, I know I ran into you somewhere. Good to see you. Glad you dropped in, AJ. Very good life notes. I believe in different areas you may see a larger population. Yeah, absolutely. Like G Ford, G Ford saying, you know, it depends on the area. And you can't, you know, based on your experience, like if you're not exposed to different areas, like you know, if you go to the East Coast, right, where where the population, the African American population is bigger. You may see them more involved in the, you know, drive, like I said, driving the heavy equipment, not just holding the sign, maybe actually being the GC, the general contractor, not just the, you know, the, the water, the guy, the guy who totes the water around. <laughs> you know, I mean, let's, you know, so, yes, you know, so it's, a lot of it has to do with exposure and where you're from. And but even OK, put it like this, even if they're is that going on right even if it's a matter of demographics and you know you you you're you're looking at a certain demographic and if the population of one group is larger you're going to see that group doing doing more 
uh, <clears throat> more of the technical uh, uh, or handling the machinery more. That still doesn't ex- that still doesn't explain it though, because um, there are skilled people in every group. Every every culture has skilled people, right? So I think, in my opinion, they should all get a part of the, a piece of the pie, not just one over the other. It's just you're right. Tell me, you know, give me a thumbs up if you agree with that. So even if there's an imbalance in in, in the groups, right, like in one area, you know, let, let's show some love to everybody. Just like I show love to everybody in the chat. Yeah, so, yeah, like, like you know, like I said, this shortage, man, this this shortage really, very good life knows. Who you know or don't know is definitely keeping blacks out. Also, our... Uh, our community is difficult to get institutional institutionalization uh, of the mindset. Unfortunately, yes, that unfortunately, that's true. Perry Good Life knows uh, uh, a lot of times it's who you know, and uh, but you know that, that's the sad part part about it. You know, because no matter how skilled you are, if it comes down to who you know, then you're gonna have a rough time. You're gonna have a rough time, and unfortunately, yeah. In in the African American certain certain parts of the Afri- African American community, uh, uh, there is that institu- institutionalization of the mindset that uh, that keeps keeps certain you know keeps certain parts of the population from advancing. Okay, so there's some kind of accountability there that we have to take. On ourselves, we just can't. You can't blame everybody else for. Every, you can't blame. You just can't blame outside factors without looking at what you can do about your own situation. Okay, so it's not about a blame game. It's about, hey, this is chess, man. If 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 your mindset's wrong, you're gonna pay the price. Period. No matter you know, even if that wasn't happening to you from the outside, let's just say that that wasn't you know the factor, right? We know it is, but let's just say it wasn't a factor. Your mindset will create your own demise. You know, you won't advance because your mindset is wrong. But, hey, it, it's it's there, though. You know I mean, I'm just saying that those out, there's outside factors and there's inside factors. The inside factors we can control. Che, Che, how you doing, Che? Yeah. Che, you're absolutely right, man. A lot of inner city kids can't pass the drug test. And that's, you know, you know, I'm a, you know, I've been in the trucking industry for a long time and I get, you know, they drug test you every month. It's it's just random, random drug tests. I mean, they don't, I mean, sure. It's like you have no, no say in it. You never know when it's going to come up, but Che is right. So like I said, I've I've been, I've been in the trucking industry industry for a long time. And I knew, I know a lot of uh, truckers, man, they would ask me, Hey man, can you, can you, Give me some of your your stuff so I can take it. To <laughs> so, uh, you know, I have, you know, and I'll be like, dang, it's like that, man. I mean, yeah, come on, man. You got to be able to put that put that marijuana down, put that weed down or whatever. You trying to, if you're trying to advance, but it goes back to what Perry Girl Life, Life, Life No said, the mindset, right? Why do you have to stay high all the time? What's so cool about that? I mean, come on, man. Do you want to advance? Do you want to be able to compete? G4, it starts at home. Yeah, I, 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 I you know what? I'm gonna say I 90% agree with that, G4, because sometimes, man, you could good, you, you have, you have good, upstanding parents, and you still want to go your own way because you're listening to the what's out there. You're hanging around the wrong crowd. You're being influenced, right? You're looking at all this stuff on social media, which, you know, social media could be a great thing, but the dark side of it is like you got all these, you know, it just multiplies the, the ignorance it multiplies the ignorance out there so that way now nah, black men get sacked on the job like qbs in the playoffs <laughs> man black men get sacked on the job like like uh like qbs in the playoffs hey um at way i feel you i feel you i mean and uh, just this as a qualifier before before I, I, I reply, um, we're talking about not the ignorant 
ones, okay, that just don't want to do right, that want to get high, that want to come to the job with the pants sagging, and, and and just no decorum, okay. And I'm talking to my brothers out there, okay, guys. If you watch this, you can't get ahead in life if you if if you're acting like that, man. You can't bring that that mindset and that culture, that dysfunctional mindset and culture. On onto a job, and expect to be expect to advance. You know, it's bad enough that you get, that, that you already have a perception out there in the world of you that's that's negative. Why, why just uh, multiply that that perception in people's minds? It's just it's just ridiculous. We got to get off of that, guys. Okay, I'm talking to my, my my brothers, my people, my black man. Yeah, I'm gonna go there. You know what I'm saying? Let we got to do better in that respect. But let's put that aside. The ones that are doing better, Atway has a point. You can you can be the most upstanding person, but you're still gonna you're still gonna confront that the evil of, of just racism out there, bro, on the job, man. And I know in the trades, I've been in the trades like over 30 years, bro. I've been in the trades, I've been a trucker, okay. And I and I've I've been around a lot of different trades, and I see, you know. I see. I see what goes on. It's just a harsh. Re it's it's the dark side of human nature that that's there. That, that that's acting out. G Ford, whose fault is that? Well, you know, G Ford. I mean, well, I think it's. I think there's there's a place for self accountability, right? You can't necessarily blame the other, even if if even if you even if the other is doing what you say they're doing, right? Um. You got to look at what what can you do about it. But what I'm trying to say is that if you're doing your best, you're putting your best foot forward, and you're still encountering that, then it's not necessarily your fault in that in that in that uh, in that respect. Because you're you, you're putting your best foot forward, right? You, you're, you're dressing well. You you have all these certifications, and you still encounter somebody or, or that that wants to. And that's life. I get it. Everybody encounters that to a degree. But the African American population, let's be real. They can't, you know. Uh, there's that added element of of racism that we have to encounter out there in the world, even in the trades. Very good life notes. One person at a time. Very good life notes. The system with legalization of marijuana has created a vacuum where kids think it's okay, and that's that's true. Um. Um. Yes, um, and you, you got to kind of look at why these political decisions are made, and why, you know, what what's the what's the reason, right? Why do they why did they make it legal, right? Why did they make it legal? Because now everybody's doing it. It's legal. It's just dumbing down society. I know offense to you if you smoke weed on you know uh, from from for medical reasons or health reasons or recreational reasons, but Let's face it. I mean, recreational reasons usually turns into a lifestyle. It's not just on the weekends. It's every day you get off work and you gotta you gotta have a, a blunt, you know. And then when you go when you need when you go get drug tested from that random drug test, you try you trying to get that welding job or that that union job or whatever. You you out of luck. At way, I heard some uh, some cats and watts say making seventeen dollars an hour. On the job is better than selling. They was happy that Frida <laughs> to cash their check. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's face it. I mean, it has to come to a point where you grow up and you realize, hey, you want to earn an honest living. You want to earn an honest living, and uh, you want to get out of that trap, man. Because you got, you got, there's traps everywhere. There's traps every everywhere man you just got to learn how to see it they hard to see sometimes I i'm gonna I'm throw an analogy out there you know like a, a, a spider right look at the spider a spider builds a web and it and it sits in that web and the, it's as still as can be it ain't even moving right and then you got a a, a fly or a butterfly or insect flies right into the web that web it's all, you can't even see it. Even when we look at the web, you can't see it. You just see the spider sitting in the web. 
right? But the web is so thin and, and so the, the threads of it is so fine, it's invisible, it's designed like that. And then when they go in there, when when the when when the insect or fly gets trapped in it, it's because you couldn't see it. So we got to learn how to see these traps, man. You know, all, like selling drugs and, and 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 smoking weed all day. That's that's a trap. That's like the spider web. All right, let's see here. I love you guys coming in here and interacting. This is what it's all about. This is what it's all about, guys. Very good life notes. The mentors have to help the younger folk to build a resistance because it will happen. <sighs> hey, I always said, man, I always felt it was my responsibility. I don't have to be related to you. You don't have to be my blood brother or my or my child or whatever for me to come up to you and, and, and talk some sense into you. At least plant the seed because I look at you as part of me. Okay. So if I see kids out there on the street, I, I stop them and I say, hey, man, what, what you doing with your life? And they may not listen to me. They may laugh at me and, and say, oh, yeah, yeah, OG. OK, OG. Yeah, thanks, OG. But maybe later on that night, they lay in their bed and think about what I said. Somebody got to care about these kids. So I agree with you, Perry Girl Life Notes, the mentors. At wait, literally, these, these cats was bragging about having a job rather than being on the block. These bros need to be funneled into gainful employment. That's what I'm talking about, man. And, you know, if we can get them to think about not just bragging about a job, but bragging about starting their own thing. Because remember, a job is just a stepping stone. It ain't the final. It's not the final say. If they could start bragging about starting their own businesses and circulating their, the dollar in their own communities. OK, start bragging about that. But, hey, I love the fact that they're starting there, bragging about a job rather than bragging about being on the block, man, because that's the saddest thing to see. Che, 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 the truth. All large construction projects are mandated to hire from local zip codes. However, the pool, the pool of candidates from these areas are very low. Yeah. I hear you. With, I hear you on that, Che. I mean, it's sad, man. I, I, I really... It really bothers me. It really bugs me. And that's one of the reasons why I, I started the channel. Because I want to I want to represent. OK, I want to represent to my community. Hey, listen, we're not all about rap. We're not all about entertainment. We're not all athletes. I know Che. Che is a master welder. OK. He teaches. He teaches welding as, as well at, at, at a college. OK, so. And he, he's been very successful. He's been very successful at it. He's not hurting. I'll just put it like that. If we could produce a million more Chays, I'll be happy. You know? So so we, we it, it, it's, it's really up to us to, uh, I take it upon myself. And like, like I said, one of the reasons I started the channel is because I wanted to reach a larger uh a larger, you know, audience, a larger audience with this message here. It's not just about, oh, let me show you how to use a drill. Let me show you how to fi fix that. Or let me show you what I'm building today. No, man, this is not all, this is not about me at all. Okay. This is about us. This is about, you know, reaching a larger audience and, and the platforms that we have today, you know, uh, to reach larger, larger audiences. Why not use them to do it, to get the right message out? That's my message, man. I want to expose us. Say, hey, look, learn a skill, man. They can't take once you learn a skill, that can't be taken away from you. You can go out there and build. You can go out there in the middle of nowhere and build you a house from scratch. You can build you a community from scratch if you have the right knowledge. We've done it before. That's the right word. Dumbing down society. Yep. Yep. Very good life notes. The Drons Doctor. What's going on, sir? How you doing? Thanks for coming on in and joining the conversation. Yeah, we just thought we just here talking about uh the shortage of uh skilled trades uh workers and, and some of the reasons behind that. And we kind of got off into some politics, some economics, we got off into some cultural issues. Um that way, these projects are 
Rush, rush. They're not trying to educate. Educating is the mandate. If you can't produce competent black wor workers, you can't get the public dollar. Yeah, it's, it's about producing competent, competent workers, black workers. You know, in this case, we're talking about the African-American community and the effects that it has on them. And. OK, this is an analogy that I like to use when it comes to trying to fix a problem and that a lot of people don't seem to understand. That's great, Ron Stock. I'm glad you're doing good, man. A lot of times when you bring up issues, right, especially concerning like certain certain groups, African Americans or, or whoever, right, and you talk about their problems, then people look at you like, get off of your soapbox. Stop, you've been crying. Hey, uh, you know, quit crying about it. Well, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna cry about it because I live in the in the African American community and I see. What, what's happening here okay and my 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 channel is not is for everybody it's for everybody to learn okay but if you have if, if you if, if you're sick in one part of your body say say uh i have a i have a bad knee right i got a bad knee but i say you know i i talk about my shoulder my shoulder's fine what about my knee? You got to concentrate on where the problem is, and it's in the knee. Well, it's the same thing when you talk about cultural issues and and problems. If you talk, if I talk about the African American community or anybody does, it's not that people are crying. It's the fact that that's where the the problem is, and you got to go there to to address it. So if somebody doesn't like me talking about certain things, then just maybe you don't need to be watching this or watching me, because like I said, I'm not just about showing you how to use tools. I get on these lives and I talk about the trades and how economics, culture, and politics all are married together. They're intertwined. So you got to, if I'm talking about the trades, I'm at some point I'm going to touch on the, the cultural stuff, economic stuff, right? Because they're all, they're all connected. Somebody came in the chat and said he, 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 he doesn't, he sees, Black men is just holding signs on the construction sites. Why should I be happy that just, I just see black men holding signs on the construction sites? Should I be okay with that? Should you be okay with that? I guess some people are okay with that. But like, you know, I mean, just to be fair, this is the West Coast. But it doesn't matter the demographic. I think everybody should get a, get a chance to, to learn the skills not just hold signs up. G4, this is America. <laughs> Freedom of speech. I got you. All right, I got you. That's right. So yeah, so the pandemic put a, put a lot of people out of work in the trades, guys, because it's not, you can't just say, okay, I'm going to work remotely. I'm going to fix your, I'm going to build your home remotely. You can't, <laughs> you can't do that. That's not, that's not uh that's not gonna happen in the trade. So it put a lot of tradesmen out of work because of that. A lot of them just left left the trades. Period. They, and and they had this thing when, when in in, the, in its height in the height of its intensity. Depend you know they had this thing called the Great Resignation. So it wasn't just in the trades. Everybody was leaving. Everybody was was leaving their jobs. A lot of people didn't want to come back to work, and it still hasn't rebounded to the fact you know where, where everybody's back in an office. So the the actual work environment has been transformed by the pan, but by that, you know, the whole pandemic thing where working from home is actually more economical for some companies, right? They don't even want to bring the, bring people back in, in, in the building because they said, Oh, we're saving all this money. Jay Chauncey, a lack of role models in the hood is a direct result of lack of uh, safety and security in the hood. Uh-huh. A lot of role models move out the hood to provide, a safe place to raise their families. Hey, Shay, I absolutely, man. I, if you, you don't, nobody's telling anybody to stay in an environment that's putting their kids in jeopardy, that's putting themselves in jeopardy, putting their, that's thinking about the future, their future generations, right? Why would you stay in a dysfunctional environment? Yeah. John's doctor, color doesn't matter except green. Say that again. 
at the end of the day, like G4 said, this is America. Color doesn't matter except green. He said he loves it. He works from home. Hey, what, what you do, G4? If I, if I may ask, you don't have to tell tell me if you don't want to. If you don't want to. Perry Girl Life knows construction never stopped during COVID. I'm sure it didn't. Elaborate on that, Perry Girl Life note, because there is a shortage. Uh, money. Oh, you're a, you're an accountant. Oh, okay. What kind of accountant? Accounting, do you do uh, G4? Do you do because uh... I know there are different fields of accounting. Which one do you which one do you like? There's regulatory compliance. I just learned that from uh, uh, Perry Girl Life Notes informed me about there's diff there's a different types of accounting that out there. You know, it's not, it's not just one lump general thing accounting, there's different kinds. Interesting. My, my father was an accountant as well. And he was kind of a tradesman too, so he got you know he had the skills. Yeah. In AR, hmm, what does AR mean? Like, uh, um, not A and R, but AR. Yeah, educate us, G four. But yeah, like Chase said, I mean, like Chase said, if you live in a dysfunctional environment, right? And there's reasons for that dysfunction, that why that dysfunction exists. And that's why it really, it really irks me when, when people look at the hood, okay, and uh, they don't understand why the hood exists, right? But they want to point fingers at the hood. There, there's a lot of dysfunction in the hood, in what we call the hood, right? Um, but there's a reason that exists. OK. And once again, we can go all, go all into the history of it. I mean, from slavery on to the what, all to up to now to creating areas, redlining and all that stuff and and pumping drugs into the neighborhoods and just, you know, external factors that that that, that oppressed and, and a certain people in certain you know areas. You, you pretty much corral them in a certain area, in certain areas. OK and made sure that they had next to nothing in those areas, just enough to survive. And what is that going to produce? That's going to produce crime, guys, because believe it or not, the average guy in the hood, he has ambition just like Bill Gates had ambition. The average the, the guy in the hood, he has ambition just like Steve Jobs had ambition, okay? Just like anybody in any from any other culture has ambition, the little young Black male in the hood has even more ambition. Why? Because he wants to rise and get out of there. And unfortunately, he makes the wrong choices based on, a lot of times he makes the wrong choices based on his environment. Okay? So let's not be so quick to, we have to look at the whole picture. But if somebody doesn't see you as worthy, that you're just from the hood, you're just that from the hood, they're not going to see the whole picture because they don't want to. So this function, this dysfunction happens, and you have an upstanding person that want, that has ambition and he does the right things to get out of the hood, and I can't blame him. What I don't like though is if he gets out of the hood and he forgets that there's a lot of young men that would just like him and have ambition. They just need a little bit of guidance, and that's why I started this channel. All right. At wait, color matters when they decide to hand thirty dollars an hour plus benefits too. <laughs> hey, I, I I hear you, brother. Oh, you work in receivables. Okay, account receivables collects the company's money. That's what Perry Good Life No says. Getting that getting that money, G Ford, collecting that money. <laughs> Conspiracy theory. What's a conspiracy theory, G4? I, yeah, certain conspiracy theories exist. And, you know, people talk about, okay, there's a boogeyman out there. Oh, the, the boogeyman. Yeah. Well, hey, sometimes you just look at history, man. There was a boogeyman. That's, that's a part, and it had an effect on, on, on certain groups of people, right? So, you know. 
And once again, to be fair, some people use that as a crutch not to do anything. Everybody's not going to be like ambitious. They're going to use their situation as a crutch, an excuse not to do better. So in that in that way, I agree with you. Very good. That's why I'm prepared to go back and pull forward. Yes. Sometimes you got to go back to get a running start so you can go forward. You hear that? Sometimes you got to back up, go back where you came from to get a running start to help others. Before what you said earlier about pumping drugs in the, in the community. Yeah, that, that's real. That's real. I mean, I mean, there was, they were talking about, uh, I, I remember hearing about, you know, because they like to bring up Chicago, right? Chicago is like like the the hellhole of America when it comes to you know, because and of course, African Americans that live, you know, were the reasons for that. But who puts the guns in those places? I mean, the African Americans aren't; they don't have gun factories. You know, they're they're not you know, but unfortunately, the mindset in a lot of those places is so dysfunctional that you know you're killing each other. Sick. Yeah. L. Harris, drain the coffers. <laughs> Elaborate on that, L. Harris. My father always told me, it's not what you make, it's what you owe. Hmm. In other words, the drawings doctor, are you saying it's not what you make, it's what you keep, right? So if you don't owe much, I mean, you can make a million dollars, but if you owe if you owe uh, two million, then you're still broke. Economic will always parallel your life. No, economics will always affect. Yeah, I mean, it comes down to economics. I mean, if people if people are having a hard time eating and feeding their families, they're gonna they're gonna revert to the base level. Just to feed themselves, it's just human. It's just human nature. If you reduce somebody's ability to feed themselves, you deny them jobs, or you discriminate, or whatever's going on in the economy, they're gonna do what they have to do to get that to, to eat. And, and and crime, crime itself is just, I think, a, crime itself. And I'm not excusing anything. I'm just saying crime is a natural outcome of deprivation of resources. You don't know what you will do if you need to eat. Yeah, it's not what you make, it's what you owe. Very good life notes. Pulling takes time and sacrifice. Yes, that's what it comes down to, time and sacrifice. G4, yeah, but if someone hands you something... You have the opportunity to erect it if it's bad for you. What are you trying to say? You have the opportunity to refuse it, G4. I think that's what you meant to say. Yeah, you do have the opportunity to, to, to refuse it. Reject it. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha, G4. You do have the opportunity to reject it. I totally agree with that. But if you if, if you if you um, but let, let's let's take a kid for instance. Let's take a kid, right? Most 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 kids they like sweets, although sweets and we know as adults sweets are bad for you, right? Um, but if you go to a, a, a elementary school, and I'm not I'm not comparing, Af you know, certain demographic graphics to elementary. Just just go with my analogy for a second. And you hand a kid a, some sweets, most of the time they're gonna grab it, right? Especially if they've been conditioned through media and through whatever. Yeah. Eat this, it's sweet, it's good, and all that stuff. Well, if you if you hand guns to, to kids in, in say the African American communities or Hispanic communities that are un, what we call underserved, and if you hand them the drugs and you say, Hey, listen, you can make a lot of money. Here's this, here's this pack of this, and here's this gun. Let's go make this money, this fast money. And they make that and they try it. And it's 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 fast money. It's kind of hard to turn now. So it's it's a vicious cycle, guys. Right? It's a vicious cycle, especially when you have nothing already. So it's going to take a lot to. 
I mean, we have the we have the you have to look at look within, but you also have to look at some of the factors without that are contributing to it. If I say G Ford here, here's a million dollars, G Ford. No strings attached. Would you take it, even though there's strings attached? <laughs> even though you may not know all the strings attached, but if I say, hey, G Ford, man, I like you. Here's a million bucks. It'd be hard to refuse, wouldn't it? So I know sometimes we we can say, hey, man, they're taking those. You didn't have to. You didn't have to do the drugs. You didn't have to sell the drugs. You didn't have. To. Well, look at this person's life. G Ford, yeah, a kid, but we have to teach that. The idea to use their brains. That's where it starts at the home. No, one million is not a lot of money. <laughs> hey, you're an accountant, so I, hey, you're an accountant, G Ford. So I, 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 you, yeah, one million ain't ain't a lot of money, right? Based on some of the numbers you probably see coming through. I think I think in some ways, G Ford, we're both right. Yeah, if it's the home is where it starts, and if the home was destroyed, right? You don't have father in the home to guide you in the right, you know, you'll have a father in the home. And if the father in, is in the home, he he himself comes from a dysfunctional environment. That, right? I agree with you. It starts in the home, right? But if the home environment is not stable, it's not healthy, it's dysfunctional, it's been conditioned to think it's less than, then it's going to produce kids who think they're less than. It's going to produce dysfunctional kids. Who make the wrong choices and they see the wrong choices being made all around them where did that happen g ford where did that happen where the family was broken up how did that happen guess what in the 1950s and even during the reconstruction era the african-american family was more intact but it was being attacked from the outside and that continues that continued Bring, pouring drugs into the African-American communities was another way of putting the nail in the coffin in, in the African-American family and destroying it from the inside. No, from the outside, but destroy, but planting the seeds of destruction. So we can't just look at one side of it. We got to look at everything that happened. And it's a lot of it was not the fault because all you got to do is look at history and look at uh, the the prosperous communities in the African-American uh, community in America that were destroyed. I'm talking about Black Wall Street, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Greenwood, Rosewood, and many others we never heard about that were destroyed just because they were doing well. That way, I can't train 10 boys from uh, moms who like the boys to be industrious. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we got to train, train our boys to be more industrious. Absolutely. That's one of the reasons I started the channel. Help them with their mindset, G Ford. I agree with you, G Ford. I'm there with you, man. Very good life notes, right at way. But if the home is unstable, it cannot start. Absolutely. Drawn stock, that's right. So, all I urge people to do, everybody has their opinions. And a lot of times we all are right. But what we don't do is look at the whole picture of why something is the way it is, which means looking at history. But if we have our own views, on uh, our own limited views, we don't want to see the others. We don't want to see the whole picture because then we'll have to say, oh, that's why that happened. Oh, that's why it's like that. It had to do with that. It had to do with maybe my people did it. You know? So, yeah. Um, you know, the trades. I mean, I, I really, that's the backbone of, of, of any community. Being able to build that community from scratch. You know, build the homes, build the businesses, build the buildings, build the infrastructure. You know, you can't have anything without the trades, man. It's just, <laughs> you can't have anything without somebody know how to work with their hands. 
They know how to build. They know how to run the electrical. Know how to run the plumbing. Know how to do the structural welding. You can't. You can't go to an office building without a tradesman. Um, very good life. Now it's going to the community with options for these those homes that are missing the push. Yeah, I do believe in outreach. I'm a staunch advocate of outreach. Go out there, man. I and you know you can go out there like me having this channel is is, is part of me going out there because I can let's just say I can go go door to door, but it'll take me forever to reach the amount of people I reach here. So why not? I can take a man who makes thirty dollars an hour and take the other man that makes fifteen dollars an hour. The man that makes fifteen dollars an hour doesn't owe anybody. He will have more money than the man that makes thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> hey, um, that 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 definitely happens. It depends on how you handle handle your money. If you're irresponsible with your money, it doesn't matter how much you make, you will end up broke in the end. And uh, yes, it's hard, but we have to do it. Yeah, see, a lot of people think that we come into this life to have it easy. I think we need to get it out of our minds. It's not about being life being easy. It's it's about us being stronger. And by us getting stronger and growing through the struggles, then it becomes easy. It's not about life being easy. Quit looking for easy. Quit looking for happy. Look for growth. In growth, you will find the seeds of happiness and ease. But you got to put in the work. Learn to love the work. Uh, anyway, if the mom like hardworking men with character and work ethic, then the boys will gravitate to that direction and the daughters will follow. Man, that's that's what I'm talking about that way. Most of the time, a man is out there working his butt off just to please a woman. Right? That's what most of the time he's out there. Unless he, most men are out there. or All men are out there for that. So if the woman is attracted to the dysfunctional man, she sways what 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 men will will try to be in order to please her, which is so 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 the guy, you know, action acting dysfunctional. If he's getting all the women, then the man that actually has the character and work ethic, he's not. You know, he's looking at looking at that and say something doesn't compute here. So imagine a young man who hasn't even developed his work ethic and character. Imagine if he sees that. He's going to become that guy. Very true, Atway. Very true. So it's not just about, we, we got to, it's a cultural thing, man. We got to, we got to, the men and the women, the girls and the boys, they, we have the, we have the, the women of, but that's, that's a whole other YouTube channel, man. <laughs> Talking about women, uh, you know, but but we but that's a very good point. Women have you have a very a lot of influence, a lot of influence. Okay, <laughs> G four. Uh, I like it. G four say change your taste in women. I got you. Change your taste in women, but these you know remember you were young, you weren't thinking about changing. You weren't you know you just trying to you're trying to get the the the, the best looking girl, man, the, the one. You know what? You wouldn't. You didn't care about her character until until she showed it to you, and then maybe maybe then you you might you may have learned, but you know, some things you just learn as you get you know as you get more mature, right? So if, if the women they're not re respecting the man going out there working hard in the trade and going after the man getting the fast money and the fancy cars. A young man is gonna, you know, unfortunately, a young man who has come from comes from a underserved community. He's gonna look at that and say, "Huh, why should I go work hard when I can get that by doing that?" You know, women shape the community with access. Actually, yeah, yeah, women have so much influence. The female gender has, you know, they they think they're they're not powerful. They think they're not empowered, but they are. They hold a lot of power. And some of them are misguided because they they believe uh, because they don't have power that it's a male dominated society, it's a patriarchal society. They
they try to usurp that and become men, become what get what men have, and lose their femininity at the same time. When femininity has nothing to do with being a doormat. But that's a whole nother conversation. This is not a Kevin Samuels uh, channel. Um, our purpose here on earth will be best fulfilled by making sure we are reaching around us and sharing knowledge. It's all about sharing knowledge, Barry. Your life knows. It's all about sharing knowledge. Okay. Yeah, guys. So uh, once again, as we see here, we can talk about the trades. But eventually, as we go deeper into why certain issues exist, it's because it goes, it gets deeper, right? Than just, just, just you know, it gets deeper. Now we're talking about mindsets and and, and culture and, and, and history and and what what we have done to each other to cause these situations and, and the disparities and inequities we see in in in, in the world and, and, and specifically in, on my channel in trades or whatever. And, and it's all intertwined. It's all intertwined. Politics, economics, culture. Those three things, man. You can't have one, one without the other. You know? Um, so, yeah. History repeats itself, Drawn's doctor. It will repeat itself if we don't learn from it. That's the way it's designed, and it needs to repeat itself. It's kind of like... You know, people talk about you know, the, the whole philosophy of reincarnation. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying I'm not. This is not a topic about me believing in that or not. But apparently you come back. If you don't learn lessons, you, you keep coming back to this earth. And this, you know, you, you can't ascend to the next level until you learn. So you keep coming back, learn lessons, learn lessons. History keeps repeating itself until one day you learn. OK, boom. Yeah, thanks. This was it. Hey. G Ford, man, I thank I I I, I want to thank G Ford on this live for being the devil's advocate. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding, but for actually challenging me on or challenging the conversation, I should say, with a different perspective, and that's how we we learn and we and it pulls out further explanation, further di uh, uh, articulation of, of of our statements. We have to have some kind of Resistance, I should say. I don't think G Ford was resisting. I think we were agreeing, but we had different. We saw it from different angles. Same with Che. You know, he he brought some things up as well. Everybody brought things up that 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 was of value on this. I want to thank everybody for coming in. Um, yeah, we we still the the the, the shortage of trade skill workers is still out there, and. Uh, we we can do uh, our part to change that, and and uh, help the kids realize, hey, this is a viable option for you. You can make if if it's all about money, you want to be successful. You can get in a trade and 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 and, and you know learn that craft and go wherever you want to go in the world. It's not a job. It's a, it's a lifestyle. It's something that can pay your bills, feed you, and then some. Wherever you go in the world. Because ultimately, this channel is not about jobs. That's just a stepping stone, guys. You can you can you can get to the point where you're actually creating jobs. You're not looking for you're creating jobs. So that's how I want my people to think. Thanks, thanks y'all for coming in, and uh, love every one of y'all. You know, I, I appreciate it. It was a great conversation that way. You know, and. Um, very good life notes. When I'm talking to young, youngsters, I challenge them to go to trade school so they can fulfill the entertainment dreams, saying you can make money and do the entertainment bug. Yeah, you can. Let's get out of let's get out of the mindset, guys, that we got to be trapped in just one thing. We're multidimensional beings, guys. We can do a lot of things at once and we can do them well, right? Because our, you know, our nature, you know. The source lives within us. Call it God. Call it you know, uh, the Most High or the, the you know the source of all things. You know, whatever you're you know that's what animates us, guys. Creator of all things. <clears throat> we can do a lot of things at once, right? It's all about 
focusing though, but but there is a there is a place for focus now. You got to focus and, and get good at one or two things. You know, you can't spread yourself too thin. You know, get get good at get whatever you're doing. Get good at it. Where you you I mean, you could do it in your sleep. You know, then you will never worry about money. You'll never worry about not having. Just get good at something. Get get really good at it. Don't don't be distracted by women. Don't be distracted. Women don't be distracted by the men. Get good at that thing, okay? And and and, and of course you're gonna have time to play and all that and enjoy life, but have something that you're so good at, right? That that you don't have to worry about anything. You know that thing. You 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 form the relationship with that thing. It's part of you now. That it's gonna feed you. It's gonna bring you what you need because you're using that that ability, that 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 that, that gift, uh, that work ethic to to help feed yourself. All right, you and then you'll be all right, regardless of what's out there, regardless of the haters out there in the world, right? Because we always gonna have them. But hey, if you you can love your haters too, man. They they give you you know all they do is help help you marketing. <laughs> That's all they do, man. Help you marketing. Anyway, guys, I appreciate you guys coming in. And uh, see you next time, Tuesday at 7 o'clock. And come on in and we'll talk about something else. All right? Love you. Take care.